you know, I thought the humans were pretty impressive. But then I took a look at the gods. Before we hop into this ranking of the record of Ragnarok gods' abilities, please do me a favor and leave your own list in the comment section down below. Leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Now, let's get into it. What's up guys, I'm the Pencil here, and here we are to discuss the record of Ragnarok God's abilities, and by discuss, I mean rank them. I really like these abilities, dare I say even a bit more than the human's abilities, despite how cool the human's abilities are. These abilities are just, whew, they hit a little bit different than the rest, I'm not even gonna lie to you. I really enjoy every single one of them. I do have issues with some, I wish some had been used more, I wish some had different side effects, I wish some didn't kill you, but regardless of that, let's hop right into it with number five. Poseidon, you did us so dirty, bro. Like, why Why not? I know I know exactly why. It's one of the main reasons I like Poseidon. But to not see Poseidon use any of his hydrokinesis, it, it kind of saddens me. I'm not going to lie. But I'll, I'll take what I can get with his divine speed. Because that's the thing. Poseidon is, shockingly enough, a speed-type character. Compared to all his fellow gods, including the lightning god, including the supreme god, including the god of destruction, all of these beings are, um, yeah, they aren't... They aren't that fast, or at least not in comparison to someone like Poseidon, whose entire thing was, oh yeah, I'm going to hit you one way or another. And the thing about the way Poseidon went about that is how the great the great thing that I enjoy so much is how Poseidon's speed just kept rising. But technically, he wasn't getting stronger. He was just holding back less. Like, the sheer ability to counter the ability to read your opponent's movements by literally brute forcing them through speed alone, it blows my mind. And while I do get mad to this day that we didn't see Poseidon at least use one water whip or something, especially since in the intro he had such a cool moment where he parted the ocean to walk up onto the stage, I'm disappointed in the fact that he didn't use any of his water power, so that was the limit of it. We didn't get to see it, but I can even let that slide mainly because of how he used his speed to almost imitate his own water abilities. Divine Lightning, where he just leaps into the air and begins stabbing down at Kojiro so fast that he creates a dome of after images that just coat the entire arena and no one's able to tell where he is. That is, it's stuff that's cool, but I wish we had more, like, I love Poseidon, y'all know I love Poseidon, but my main issue with that arrogance of his, and despite how good of a character it makes him, Man, the fight would have been so much cooler if on top of all the speed of Poseidon himself, Sasuke had to start dodging these water spears that would come out of nowhere from the area around him. The way that Sasuke would likely have to start fighting down the water spears alongside Poseidon, and he would have to start making new images on top of that, and that would lead better into him scanning all of creation. Because the thing with him scanning all of creation, as cool as that was, and as cool as it was to see Sasuke read into the future that far, what would have been even cooler if... He had to read all creation because it felt like all creation was coming to attack him. But Sidon is known as the Earth Shaker, at least in Greek mythology. So to see him start bringing in the water and having it rise from the sky and fall down on Sasaki and also have the earth itself shake and crumble as Poseidon itself is all attacking it would have been so cool and to see Sasaki scan all of that and begin to dodge and move forward and finally strike Poseidon down that would have been amazing but we didn't get that we got divine speed and I like divine speed and I also like the little bit of hydrokinesis we got but sorry I'm sorry Poseidon it gotta fall at the bottom for this because as much as I would like the divine speed because it's just a very nice ability to have. Like, can you imagine just being able to move that fast simply through simply through pure speed? Like, to be fair, Poseidon was styling on Sasaki for the most part. And that's mainly because he was just that fast. Like, the, you have no reason not to. I would love to style on somebody with that level of speed. However, man, I would have also used my hydrokinesis powers more, especially if my life was in danger. But hey, it's Poseidon. I'm definitely gonna talk about Poseidon in his own video and how much I think he has he's underrated as a character but i understand why people underrate him as a character but that's not for here we're gonna move on to number four all right so y'all know i ain't the biggest fan of heracles i think he's boring but i do think his techniques are rather interesting if not used all that well the thing is all of heracles transformations look aesthetically cool like Every single transformation of his weapon to his own personal transformation in the end when he finally attaches Cerberus to him, all oh, that looks really, really cool. Only main issue with it is that they aren't necessarily used interestingly enough. They have the very good aesthetic factor to them, something I wasn't really expecting Hercules to have. I'll admit that. But the thing is, outside of that, Hercules and Exodus is almost like 
it's very much once again a setup ability for Jack. Like it's something that Jack has to overcome rather than being used in an interesting sense. Because due to Heracles being a power type, all of his things really just power him up. Like the Nemean Lion, it's just a gigantic impact that he uses to crush people. Okay, the Symphalian bird, I have no idea how to say that, I'm so sorry. But the bird where he throws it up into the air and it creates a huge gust of wind that can blow away obstacles, like, it's just a way to deflect Jack. Like, the Korean bull, we don't even get to see, because that's when Jack comes in and says, nah, B, you don't need that hand anymore, just chops it right off. And then Cerberus, it's just, it's a power-up, it's a physical make-me-stronger, and y'all know... I, I find I find the expanding hand thing, like the super size hand, goofy. I don't know. I can't take it seriously. Like the mega hand. I know it's supposed to look cool, but it's always been like joking to me. But there are ways to do it where you make a muscle large, and I find it extremely interesting, and you'll hear about that. But the thing that I still enjoy about it a bit more than Poseidon is that while we only got to see about four of the 12 labors, technically only three of the 12 labors, they were all used. And it's not like Heracles was holding back for any real reason. He was trying to go all out. Meanwhile, Poseidon was conscientiously saying, Hey, you like my water powers? Oh, <laughs> too bad. You don't get to see him. I was, I was like, oh, okay, Poseidon. Meanwhile, Heracles was like, hey, you like my labors? And I'm like, I mean, they look cool. And he's like, all right, good. I got four of them to show you. Oh, wait, maybe three. And that's perfectly fine for me. I wish they were a bit more dynamic. Like, a lot of these just seem like power tactics, power moves. I wish... One advanced his speed, one advanced his durability specifically, one advanced his strength, one gave him specific techniques, or like, instead of these labors just transforming his weapon, or transforming he himself, like he could almost summon, like it'd be weird because Jack would have to fight summons, but like imagine if he spun his weapon and threw it down and the Cretan bull itself formed from the weapon and Heracles could fight alongside it, or instead of like transforming with Cerberus, Cerberus himself would come up from the underworld and then Heracles could ride on his back and then try to trample down. I feel like it would have been way more interesting. It would have allowed more interaction with the environment for Heracles because the main thing about that fight is that Jack is the one using the environment to the most part while Heracles is just reacting to the environment constantly. So I feel like making the Hercule Herculean Exodus more varied and balanced rather than all just being like swing harder, swing air, swing whatever. I feel like it would have been more interesting, it would have given Heracles more abilities and more memorability, because I, I'm not gonna lie, I had a little bit of trouble remembering what his abilities were, I just remember that they all looked cool, because I love the transformations, the details in every single transformation are really, really cool, just that the transformations themselves, whether it be Heracles or the weapons, they don't do much for me, of course, I find the Mega Hand goofy, that's just me, that's just me, I understand if a lot of people would like this more, but enough talking about Herculean X's, let's move on to number three. Alright, so y'all know I had no idea what to call this ability. I literally just called it divinity. Because you know what? That's exactly what it is. Zeus is a divine being. And that's basically his powers. And the thing is, I wish we got to see Zeus use a weapon. I wish we got to see Zeus use lightning, if he's able to use lightning in this continuity. I don't know. He I don't even think he's called the god of lightning in this one, or the god of the sky. But regardless, I still love all of Zeus' other abilities, and I'm sad we didn't get to see them. However, my favorite thing about Zeus is like the dynamic transformations he has. Like Zeus is the only character that I will give a pass to the big arm syndrome, where he can literally just transform part of his body into one that's much larger. Because it literally feeds into the dynamic that Zeus is technically always holding back. Like to some degree, my man's holding back. Even when he goes into his full buff, massive form that just towers over Adam, he's still holding back because he has Adamus. And Adamus literally, I think. This is why I like Zeus's power so much. The rest of the powers, as cool as they are, like, none of them really inspire fear. Like, that's the thing. Like, you don't really get this ominous presence from any of the rest of the powers. Because even if they do transform the user, they don't necessarily make them bigger. They don't necessarily give them any intimidation factor. None of that is really there. But the moment Zeus goes into Adamus, a baby starts crying. The moment that Adam sees Adamus, something evil was born. He raises his guard for the first time in the fight. People are sweating. People are freaking out because it's just, it's this aura. It's this presence behind it that exudes such legendary power and that creates fear. It kicks in your fight or flight instincts and that is, whoo, whoo, it's great. And of course, I've, I'm putting the fist that surpassed time in this because as cool as it is, it's just that. It's as cool as it is. Like, really, Zeus creating that technique, 
after getting whopped in the mouth by his father and being like, darn, that kind of hurt, bro. I need to figure out how to do that myself. And he does. And it's based on all the respect and hatred for his father, the respect as a warrior, but the hatred as a terrible parent and seeing him use it, despite it being him not really being allowed to use it because Adam says, ah, B, but I still think it's cool. Zeus is cool in the sense that not only are all of his powers really, really solid in the sense that the transformations they look cool even the tr partial transformations look great adamus is amazing the fist that surpassed time is such an amazing concept all of that but that's just literally him zeus has never really shown like the true depths of his power like i'm confident that even when zeus went into adamus when zeus said he was done holding back my man had something else up his sleeve because he's that divine he's that level he's something beyond our comprehension i think that's great because it's something that, admittedly, even the rest of the gods don't really have. Even the other gods that have won, no one really brings that same sort of presence with their abilities. And honestly, as far as I can tell, due to Zeus's extreme healing factor, or at least his amazing pain tolerance, that man is darn near indestructible. Adam snapped his neck, and Zeus said, hold on a second, <sighs> Ugh, there we go. I need that back in place. Thank you very much. And of course, my man healed really, really quickly. Like, I'm gonna, the fights are lasting about 20-ish minutes. Like, since the second fight, Zeus was healed up by around the end of the fourth. And he was just chilling. He was good after that point. And he's just walking around normally. So, that divine power from the literal power of it to the healing, to the durability, to everything, it's a very simple power. But since it's so well used by Zeus and so constant, it's a constant interactive part of Zeus's character. And I think that's what I like the most. Zeus is Zeus's power is directly tied into him as a character and how often he exercises his supremacy above all the other gods in comparison to the rest of the gods' abilities where they are fight specific. So I really, really like that. I think it's super cool, but it's not as cool as number two. So let's hop right in. Shiva, Shiva, my man, she, d d d d it's called the what? Tandava Karma? I literally have no idea how to say it, but it's still that cool. Like, here's the thing. I love fire powers, like, to a different degree. I don't know, there's just something always extremely entertaining to me about them. And the way that Shiva uses it, because Shiva's a dancer. So my man be making them moves as he burns you to ashes, and I love that. It's just the great way, one, the way he activates it. The way he literally grabs his heart and says, hold on a second, and then he coughs blood, but then his body starts to turn red as it burns to oblivion. And the way he's going to, I think, I think it's one of the biggest reasons I like this power even more than the three powers before it, is because it is so deeply tied into Shiva not only him as a character, one who burns his body up for the sake of his friends, the ones who's willing to destroy himself in order to win, but the thing that I love so much is because of how, like, hyped and lore invested the transformation is. Be like, when he activates it, and he starts to glow, and his eyes open up, all five of them, and the next page says, when the time is fulfilled, Lord Shiva will dance the Tandava and bring about the destruction of the world. Like, the hype behind that, he's going to literally destroy creation in this moment. He's using that power, and you just, it doesn't in incite the same fear as Adamus does, but not only do I think it's a more visually interesting transformation than Adamus because of how all five of his eyes are open and he's literally burning himself to oblivion uh, but the way he uses it like the to be fair this isn't his only power it's the dancing with the ability to have that weird offbeat that's also a power of his which is why I like it so much the ability to carry the fists of all 1116 gods of India in his fist and swing with them great abilities I think all that in combination is why I put Shiva at number two because he just does so much work with his abilities like the the presence of Shiva is something that it's constantly underestimated because for the most part he spends the entire fight getting bullied by Raiden like Raiden grabs his arm breaks it knocks two of his other arms off like he he puts in he gets a little bit messed up, I'm not gonna lie, Shiva gets smacked up during a lot of that fight, but the way he brings it back with this limit of his power, and how he just keeps that smile on his face, and he says, let's dance till we burn up, 
bro, it's just hype. It's hype. I love it. This is the good stuff. This is the good stuff. I, I need this. Let me chop it up and I love it. It's just so good. I don't know. It's a really cool ability. One, because I love the fire. Two, because I love how extreme the heat is even before he activates his final transformation. That he literally striked, struck Raiden and then instantly burned him and cauterized his wounds in the same case. It's a cool, it's just cool, all right? It's just cool. So how can this be so darn cool, but it's not number one? Let's get right into that. Thor, you'd be happy with this. This is probably the only number one you're ever getting on any of these lists. But regardless of that, I really, really, really love fire powers. But there's something that just hits a little bit different about electricity. You know what I'm saying? Like, the way... Here's the thing, Thor, he, I don't, I'm confident as an actual factual, he, despite that swing against Lubu being the strongest in his life, I bet Thor had more in the tank, but the thing I love about Thor so much is the fact that he did not hesitate, my man said, hold on, and wait a minute, you hit me a little bit too hard there, bro, I wasn't expecting you to hit me, I'm gonna need to call down the lightning, and he did, it's just, the thing is, I know. It's not that it's not that much to use. It's very well, it's only used in combination with Mjolnir about every single moment. But still, in my mind, it's cooler. It's cooler. The thing, the reason I think it's so cool is because like it's not just Thor's only power. It's the divine strength. And I'll admit, in terms of hype, as cool as it was to see Shiva burn himself, he was burning himself to death. Zeus, as cool as it was to see that he's mostly divine, he was dividing himself to death. Like, Adamus was literally destroying him. If we're talking about Heracles, every single time he used one of the Herculean labors, he was destroying himself. Poseidon, Poseidon, we don't know any limits to his water powers because he never got to see them. So I can't praise it that much. But Thor? Thor literally comes with no drawbacks. I'm talking, like, literally, if I could have any of the abilities, it would probably go Thor, then Zeus, then probably Poseidon, then Shiva, then Heracles. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, in terms of no drawbacks, in terms of sheer amazing design, like when Thor falls backwards and then bursts with electricity and then swings down Thor's hammer, while it doesn't do much to Lubu, just the sheer spectacle of it all, I love it. I know this is a very, like, oddly biased pick, but, like, I don't know, I like lightning. That's it, that's it. There's no other reason for me to say this one is number one. That's it, I like lightning. I think Thor's hammer is honestly the coolest weapon, yes, and I love tridents, but seeing Mjolnir had a sleeping state and that the only reason Thor wo wore the gloves was because he was holding back for the hammer and when it finally woke up, he was finally allowed to go all out. It's great, and when he calls down the lightning to kill Lubu's army, I'm like, yeah, this is all good. Thor's great, Thor's great. I hope, the thing is, as cool as Thor is, as cool as all the gods is and all their abilities have been so far, I hope we get more, like, dynamic abilities. That's the main issue. I want more abilities that truly delve into the lore of the god. Like, the reason I like Shiva so much is because it delves into his lore, his fire powers, it's great. I like Thor so much because he has the lightning powers, he uses them, it's great. I just want more of it. I want more usage of the powers in more interesting and dynamic ways. But for now, I'll take what we can get. Please, whoever fights Buddha, go nuts. Please do it. Buddha, go nuts. Please do it. <laughs> I just want to see more. But regardless of that, please, tell me what you guys think. What is your list? I want to know. I know a lot of people really, really, really like the Herculean labors. I don't know. They just don't do it for me personally. But tell me what your list is in the comment section down below. Tell me what you guys think about my list. Is there anything you would change about it? Do you think some of my reasoning's off? Because I can definitely see it for this one, especially with number one. But that's all. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. This is That Guy the Pencil, writing off.